Ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Alexei Dudone. I think that's how you say his name. I want to call him Alex or Alexei, but we already have right back Alex. So does Alex just become Itagiba? Do we need a nickname for the new boy? No idea. If you've got any nickname suggestions, let me know. We were looking at this guy in the summer. I nearly spent £140 million on him. He joins us on a free transfer in the summer. Uh, I do have the option to buy him now. They want £65 million to buy him now. And whilst I think this guy is amazing, I'm not going to pay £65 million when I can get him on free in five months. Yes, the January transfer window has been in full swing. We've done a little more wheeling and dealing than you might have expected. And I have also signed one more player... For 90 million. Yeah, we're adding some big guns to the team. I feel like now you start to look at the squad, you look at the star ratings, you look at kind of our media prediction, the Premier League media Dream 11, which is slowly but surely starting to be dominated by our players. And we are entering, I think, the end game of Park to Prem. That said, there is one trophy that we have to win before this series finishes, and that is the Champions League. Today, ahead of deadline day, we take on Bayern Munich. Deadline day then happens. I don't think anything's really going to be happening, to be honest, but we're here for it just in case. And then afterwards, we take on Manchester United in the Premier League. And if we just look at the Premier League table, for the first time ever, we're top of the table with a ridiculous cushion. We're unbeaten. There's only actually 14 league games left. I've played 11 matches since last episode. Anyway, today is episode number 108 of Parked Prem. Transfers to talk about 11 games too. Let's run the intro and get straight into things, shall we? Now, of course, one new signing that joined the club as of this episode is Neto, the new Brazilian striker. Very, very excited by this guy. We kind of brought him in, of course, to be the Sinkule replacement. We had £150 million worth of players leaving. Did allow me to reinvest some money. We've done a little bit of that here. And a little bit more with the £90 million transfer I mentioned. Yes, that's right. Cesar, not, not the... Not the 90 million pound man. Uh, we signed this guy for 10.5 million. The reason I've signed him will become apparent shortly, but 20 years old, bags of potential. I like the look of him for 10 million pounds. And he has joined us because alongside all the other departures that were already organised, the likes of Kanate leaving Sinkule, Areco has headed to Saudi Arabia. Yeah, he is going to go and play for Al Fate. You might remember Al Fate. They are the team, if we just look at their players here, Wesley Gomez went to another one of our players. They paid a lot of money for a reco. Uh, if we look at things here, £38 million. Pounds. £38 million for a reco. We signed him for £7 million. Over the last couple of seasons, he's not exactly been at his best. This year, he wasn't featuring it for us too much. So when I got £38 million pounds for him and then kind of eyed up, I guess, Vasquez as the uh, the kind of obvious option to go for, for £10 million, it's just one of those deals where it made sense from a financial point of view. Vasquez is younger and I like him a lot. One other player who has left the club in January is Rene Hansen, 22 years old, Danish player. You might remember we were looking to sell him in the summer. There was an interest. Brentford have shown a little bit of interest. They bid £5.5 million for him. We will get 50% of any profit should he be sold on for significant money. A good player but just not good enough for our team. Anyway, I have teased you for long enough. I mentioned the fact that we've signed a player for £90 million. Let's talk about Edger Donald. This guy may ring a bell, a player who we had looked at in a couple of transfer specials and I decided, given our financial predicament at various points in time, I didn't necessarily want to spend £90 million on him. I've changed my tune a little bit just because we've got so much money. I have signed this guy who can play a whole host of positions, really to be the ultimate Swiss Army Knife player. I suppose in a weird way, he is probably the Zhao Victor replacement, finally. But at 22 years old, he has a lot of potential, can play a load of positions. I'm actually training him at the moment to play defensive midfielder, which is where he made his debut for us. And at times, he'll probably feature at centre-mid, potentially even at centre-back, where he could probably do a pretty good job. If there's one minor concern, he is injury prone. I feel like if you're building a team that's newly promoted, you don't want the pillars of your team to be injury prone. But given our current situation where I don't think he even really breaks into the first team, as a super sub alongside NDIA who can play a load of positions, I feel like Donald just makes sense. Yes, it's £90 million spent. We still have a transfer budget of £150 million of all the dealings that were done. And given the fact that we picked up Alexi on a free transfer, I just felt like we could go and spend a load of money on someone else. Anyway, those are all the transfers in and out of note. You may have noticed one other little trend going on here. I have loaned a load of players to Horsham. Can you remember Horsham? Our affiliates. I've not talked about them in a little while. I think the last time I talked about them, they had just been promoted to League One. That was, well, 18 months ago. And the last 18 months, 
haven't exactly gone to plan. After their shock promotion to League One, they finish rock bottom. They are now rock bottom of League Two. You can see here they have got 24 points. They are eight points from safety, but with two games in hand. And I tried to send some players on loan to them, and they didn't want to go to them. I've managed to convince a few of our younger players to go to them, who I'm hoping are going to have a big impact. Chris Bray here was an exciting player who came through our academy. He's going to spend the next five months in Horsham and hopefully save them, alongside one of the players who's developed really nicely in Dex. To Bailey. I feel like five, ten years ago, these two youth products would have been players I'd be singing and dancing about and telling you about how they're going to break into the first team. Given where our team is right now, obviously, it's a lot harder for us to nurture talent through to eventually break into the first team. But these two players have a lot about them. Uh, Dexter doesn't know how to dress himself. I'm not sure why he's wearing a half and half shirt on his AI generated picture. We won't question it. Either way, he's 18 years old. He's a striker. I'm trying to save Horsham. I'll give you an update at the end of the year as to have the youngsters managed to help them out. Now, in terms of our own performances, like I mentioned, we played a lot of matches since last episode. A sea of really good results here. Only one draw, the rest wins. Of course, last episode, we did draw against Liverpool Football Club. From there, though, we bounced back really, really well. December, very stressful time for the squad. Lots of rotation needed, and we came through it fairly convincingly. 3-1 against Leicester, followed up by back-to-back 5-0 wins against two teams down towards the bottom in Fulham and Bristol City. Nice variety of goal scorers before a win against Tottenham. Not the most of convincing results, but Diop with another all-important goal for us. Celik also popped up with a big one. And then into the month of January, we, we've gone. We've kept a fair few clean sheets. 2-0 against Villa was very, very nice. Rotate the team for this game here. Sam Faye with a brace. After that, we demolished Charlton. And then we took on the old enemy in Arsenal. There was a small part of me that felt weird not doing a live commentary against Arsenal, but I feel like you guys are probably sick of them by now. The good news is we got a really good result here. Celik, two goals, two assists. This is the kind of match where the Ballon d'Or winner really took the game by the scruff of its neck and was just the dominant force in this game. Man of the match for him, not quite living up to the promise of last year when it comes to ratings. I feel like that is a little bit harsh. He has 22 goal contributions in 22 games. 3-0 against Wolverhampton Wanderers was a nice convincing result, but not quite as convincing as 9-2 against Crystal Palace. Uh, yeah, this was one of those games where it felt like every shot that we took went in. Lee Min with a hat-trick of assists, by the way. Great to see for the left-back, who prior to that game hadn't got an assist all year. Two more games followed, the first of which was a draw against Bayer Leverkusen. I did play a fully rotated team in this game. We did try and bring on some of the big guns to try and rescue the match. Uh, they couldn't rescue it. Swainston scored an own goal in the 89th minute. Yeah, I gave Justin a chance and he hurt me. I'm sad too. Our most recent result was a good result in the FA Cup. We march on into the fifth round where we are set to take on West Ham. Today is the last game of the Champions League group stage. A win here just about mathematically guarantees us a top eight finish. I think there is a very small chance that a win isn't enough pending some results elsewhere. We're playing on the Wednesday. A fair few teams just played on the Tuesday. That said, Bayern Munich not secured their spot in the playoffs just yet. They're going to want to win that one too. Away from home for us... It's going to be a little bit of a test. Anyway, here is our best 11 after all the transfers that have happened. Of course, we've not added a load of new players just yet. Alexi, when he joins us, I, I'll be honest, I'm not sure what the plan is. I think he will play at centre attacking mid alongside Celik. That's what I'm thinking. Misiak then probably drops back to Roman Playmaker. Then maybe Bolton moves to the bench. That would feel awful to do, but that might be what's needed because the rest of the team is just that good. As for things this year, though, despite the fact we spent £90 million on him, I think Donald is going to be a bit of a Swiss army knife option for us. Of course, if Ken goes on a run of poor form, he could still come in for Ken. Elsewhere, in terms of new additions, Neto, at least to start things, is going to be on the bench. Star rating-wise, you could argue he is better than Roger Rojas. Uh, of course, stars, not the be-all or end-all. I think sometimes it depends on the kind of player that you want. I look at Neto, very, very good technically, but Rojas definitely has the edge when it comes to both mentals and physicals in terms of pace, which is something that we definitely like to use. We're not a team that pump big balls up, so the aerial ability of Neto isn't quite as useful. That said, as an option on off the bench, I'm pretty confident this guy is going to be fearsome for us. He did get some goals in the FA Cup, which was good. Still waiting for him to get a big goal against some big opposition. Maybe on off the bench today is an option. Now, you might have also spotted we have got some players on international national duty today, which is a little bit annoying. It does mean a little bit of rotation is going to be needed. Uh, sadly for us, the Brazilian youth team are playing games, and as a result of that, Mateus and Alex are out. But the good news is it allows us to move some other players in. Osse, I think, is going to have to play at wing-back here. He is very, very good, isn't he, Osse? Unless... Hmm... 
unless this might be a game to trial Misiak in that roaming playmaker role. I, I might have just given some people some false hope here. I'm going to give Neto his debut, and I am going to play Neto out of position here. I am training him to play center attack in mid. I kind of touched on this briefly last episode, but I feel like in terms of versatility on off the bench, having this as an option for him could be rather good. We'll see how he does in this today. Obviously, a bit of a test for Misiak at roaming playmaker too, against some pretty good opposition in Bayern. We will hope that Neto has a good debut According to the team selection body language there, he's hurt at the fact I'm playing him at centre attacking mid. Hurt. A key man, you mean hurt at being played out of position? That feels very dramatic. Bayern Munich's team is on display here. Mussi are still in their team. Matthias Tell. Uh, Davis is still there too. I noticed on the right-hand side they've got Rivera, who is a very, very good player in this universe. I, I will show you guys him really, really quickly because he is that good. A player who I had my eye on at one point. Sadly, he decided to sign for Bayern Munich for 4 points. 7 million. Yeah, I probably should have tried to sign him. Also, if I'm not mistaken, to eliminate any confusion, I think he's white in the match engine. He's one of those misassigned faces. We're familiar with them by now. Uh, either way, we're in possession here. We're playing in our away kit, which is quite prominent with the red. That might be a bit distracting for Bayern Munich, who are also playing in red. Although I feel like the black and white contrast is enough. As Rojas is played in behind, he's missed there. I was convinced he was going to be offside. The flag never went up. Bayern Munich are playing that kind of classic football manager, three at the back system with wing backs and two defensive mids. It's such a difficult system to break down. We're going to try our best here to try and we'll find our way through. I think given our prominence through the middle, the amount of centre attacking mids we have, the strikers, we do have a chance to overwhelm three at the back systems kind of nicely. We're trying to entice Bayern Munich forward here, but they're not that keen to initiate with a press. We're trying to pull them out of position as we knock it around the back. Dennis, by the way, back from injury. He's been in a really good run of games. And as has Lee Min, who lays it forward to Neto, playing out position. He's going on his lonesome. If he scores on his debut, it could be sensational. I don't know if he's going to be given an assist for that. Rojas has bundled it in, though. I've always considered myself more of a little man, but maybe I'll have to switch allegiances to Neto and do my shopping there. Look at this run. The dog, he's holding his basket, and he's put it in. I think a couple of deflections mean he won't get given the assist, sadly. I mean, halfway through this first half, it's not exactly been a classic. Not a load of chances for us. We've struggled to have possession, but when Bayern Munich have had it, it's very much been in their own half. One goal is good. Two goals would be twice as nice. Sadly, Bayern Munich perhaps edged things out in this game so far. And so with that in mind, I don't think we have the entitlement or expectation of a second goal just yet. We need to earn it by crafting out something good. Bolton, what a ball by Neto. Diop is there. If he is onside, that is such a good goal. Bolton back at right back today in his natural habitat. The ball by Neto was sensational as well. Is this goal going to count? VAR is going to check it. And VAR is going to give the goal. Apparently Neto was hurt being played out of position. But I'll tell you what, maybe he realises now, I was right, he was wrong. Lovely ball in behind, Bolton's cross, Diop. Very simple finish. Makes it 2-0. Of course, we are familiar with this Bayern Munich side. We took them on last year in the knockout round. There is a chance here that by hammering them, we're actually denying them a spot in the knockout round. That would be something nice to achieve. A bit of revenge after last year. And while Huari scored, chelik has got assist. It's 3-0 before half time. Bayern Munich in this save game, like they're not pushovers. They are still the best team in Germany. They've won, I think, the title. Nine out of the ten kind of most recent years, they are a dominant team. And yet when they've come up against us, we have consistently put them to the sword. It's 3-0 at the break. It's a great performance. That's why I'm thinking now, should I just rotate things ahead of Manchester United at the weekend? You know, is it worth taking off some of the big guns? You know, Rojas, maybe not the biggest of guns. Diop, though, you can come off for Sam Faye. Celic, you have a rest too. Marky Anderson has been developing very, very well lately. I want to get him back in the team. Elsewhere, do I do I want to make more changes? I, I think I might do. Swainston, you can come on a right back. He scored an own goal in our last Champions League game. I need him to develop. I want to give him some game time. We'll bring in him. And you know what? I'm going to do it because I can. Bailey Salmon, on you come as well. Bailey Salmon really isn't that far from the first team, the 19-year-old, is he? He's been improving so much. Triple sub made. Of course, now if they score, I look like an idiot. And, well, we might be on the back foot for the next 40-odd minutes. What I would say is there's been plenty of games this year where we have turned to the rotated team, as Dennis puts in a very good save there. And the rotated team, the subs, when we've made them, similar to the changes we've made here, they've just sailed into the game and done the business needed. Of course, at 3-0 up, we are at risk of being complacent. 
There's a corner that's gone in. The referee's checking something here. I, it's a corner, so it can't be an offside. Was there a foul in the build-up? Is the goal going to stand? The goal's been disallowed. It's offside. Was someone interfering with the goalkeeper? I mean, this was a corner. What happened? Ah. I mean, yeah, okay. That, I mean, that is offside, isn't it? He stood in front of a funny. Sometimes you get dodgy offsides in Football Manager. That was actually a good one. Okay, Misiak still on the pitch, whipping it wide towards Lee Min. He can't get there. However, Rojas is going to mop up the pieces for us. The Costa Rican, the number 10, he's dancing. He's running. Can he finish it? No, that would have been such a good goal. 25 minutes left of this game, given the fact we've been away from home. What a brave performance this has been. We have been all over them thus far in this game. Might be called into some more set-piece defending here. They've already had the ball in the back of the net once from one of these. Good tackle there by Neto, but it falls to Butaleb, who's got options in the middle. And Guerrero, who was offside for the last goal, was the man very nearly finding himself on the score sheet. The ball is cleared away for another corner. It's now going to be Rooney... The young Swedish player whipping it in. I say young. In real life, he's a young Swedish player playing for FC Copenhagen. In this universe, he is in his 30s. But you knew what I meant. I feel like having got that third goal, the players have kind of just chilled out. We've taken our foot off the gas. We've rested some players. And we are in a really good position now going in to our game against Manchester United. I'd like to think to try and make something happen. A clean sheet here would be good. A fourth goal would be even better. Misiak, not with his finest moment there, but by Munich leaving no one up the pitch with the ball cleared. We have a chance to come forward again. Lehman, more kind of just charging into the box. It falls to Mark Anderson. It's a scrappy goal. It's a scrappy commentary by me. They all count though. 4-0. That is game. The question now is, with that result there, did we manage to climb into the top eight? There was a very slim chance that a win wouldn't be enough, but 4-0 surely swings our goal difference. Indeed it does. In the end, we made it in by one point. End up Finishing fifth, Barcelona and Real Madrid ahead of us. Man City and Arsenal also showing very good displays in the knockout round. Kind of the, the usual suspects. Manchester United even on points with us. As for Bayern Munich, I caught it just a moment ago. They scrape in by the skin of their teeth in 24th. So we qualify for the round of 16, which is really nice. It means we skip a knockout round, which I think from a fitness point of view of our scheduling is good. Elsewhere, Chris Bray and Bailey making their debuts for Horsham, who are bottom of League 2. They've, they've only bloody gone and won 3-0. I have also noticed here, Nico Albans, who's another player I've loaned to them who came through our academy once upon a time, got two goals and two assists in his first three games. He was man of the match in that game too. I feel like I want to get scout reports on him too while he's playing for Horsham. Will Horsham stay up? Answers on a postcard, predictions in the comments. They've won 3-0 there. They are still bottom. Shearer wants improved deal for Salmon. <laughs> Doesn't sound like we're talking about football, does it? Uh, I mean, how much is Salmon on? At the, how much you on at the moment, Salmon? He's currently on £21,000 for another three years. How about we enter contract negotiations, but you are going to be a squad player. It's a contract that kicks in at the end of the season, and I, I can't afford it. Oh, yeah, well, of course. We're over our wage budget at the moment, like we were last year with all the signings I've done. I can't actually offer any contract extensions. I'm getting deja vu. And I know what you're thinking, Jack. Surely you should have envisaged this coming. The reality is, with the exception of her dad, no one else has a contract running up for another two years. So with that in mind, I wasn't that worried about contracts. Didn't really consider the fact that youngsters breaking into the first team might want new deals might leave them unhappy. Of course, this is a situation we faced last year. When that did happen, we were able to just offer the contracts at the end of the season and the players kind of forgave us. So hopefully Bailey Salmon will do that too. Anyway, our next game is against Manchester United. We are 14 games away from an unbeaten season in the Premier League. Suddenly, the expectations are rising slightly. We are still unbeaten in our new home stadium too. The Murphy and Goma Sports Complex, the Ngoma Doma. I've missed out the part time that the name's stupid, isn't it? The Ngoma Doma, as it's affectionately called. We're still unbeaten there. This game's going to be a test, though, against United in third. We play them in three days. I'll see you in a mo. Okay, I'll be honest. When I did that throw a second ago, forgot we have deadline day. Uh, the reality is, knowing that I can't offer contracts to players, very unlikely to sell any members of the first team. There are some rumours involving our players going. This might be the shortest deadline day ever. Uh, I suppose the only thing that could happen is maybe bids for Hedadl, Jao Victor. I have a look at this point. I don't want to get rid of Jao Victor because he's part of the furniture. He's also homegrown at club and whilst we're not at the threshold where I can't afford to sell anyone, of course you need four homegrown at club players. I feel like it's nice just to have some of the old guard still around. Maybe that's just me. Don't want to alarm anyone. Uh, halfway through deadline day, 
Not, not any offers on any of our players. I don't think anything's going to happen. I think really at this point, the only thing that could happen is I decide to actually sign Alexi for £65 million. But I'm not going to do that for obvious reasons. If you are wondering, by the way, how much he's going to be on, I think it's £200,000 a week. It's only a three-year contract. That's all that he wanted to sign with us. It will take him into his 30s, to be fair. I did have to offer him a fair few bonuses and extra bits and bobs because PSG wanted him. But... Think he's going to be worth all the extra bits and bobs. So far, one thing has happened on deadline day. I've sent Will here to go play for Chester in League 2. That's literally all that's happened. It's not been a classic deadline day. Okay, I'm very, very glad we didn't pick that up too much because nothing has happened. I suppose with the additions of Donald Neto and Vasquez, it wasn't like there was a high probability of us going out and signing anyone. We had already sold a lot of the players I wanted to sell earlier on in the window. You can see here the transfer kind of deadline day roundup. Uh, we were the biggest spenders in January. We also had the biggest amount of sales and the top deadline day deal was Christian Sosa going on loan to Chelsea from Arsenal. He's, he's not very good. A very confusing loan, I might add. Anyway, that is now deadline day done. Manchester United done on a couple of days. I'll join you for that now. There's definitely that coming up next. Nothing else. There's, no, there's definitely not anything else I've forgotten. I'm trying to remember the last time we did an unbeaten season in Park to Prem. I don't think it happened last year with Guernsey, although could, could be mistaken. I'll be honest, I pay quite a lot of football manager. I feel like some of you guys remember my saves better than me. One thing I know for certain is that with the number of games we've got left, we are very much on for the unbeaten season. When I look at the games we've got remaining, we have still got the likes of Man City, Liverpool, and of course Manchester United today to play. At the very least, I'd like to go and beaten at home, but I know this game today is going to be a bit of a challenge. Now, in terms of team news, sadly, the Brazilian under-23s are still doing whatever it is the Brazilian under-23s are doing. What are their under-23s playing in? Is it like Olympic qualifiers? Yeah, okay. It's the Olympic qualifiers. Brazil are currently bottom of their group, which is absolutely mental. But yes, uh, we're still without a couple of our players because of that. What it does mean in terms of our team today is we are going to go with the exact same team that dominated Bayern Munich. Of course, slightly fewer options on the bench in the Champions League, or sorry, in the Premier League versus the Champions League. In the Champions League, you can just have 12 players on the bench. It's brilliant. Here, we're limited to nine, but when you look at the team, it's still, it's still the same good team. I feel like at this point, you don't need to, me to tell you a lot else. Neto, I thought was really impressive in that last game. He was a big part of how we played and how we got our early goals. Keen to see how he does at centre attack in mid again in terms of the rest of the team it's, it's just a good team in it there's not much more to be said at this point this team knows how to do the business let's hope they can do it again here i feel like we had a really really good january transfer window we added a little bit of depth some luxury signings moved on some players that i think were a bit overrated and overvalued uh, for some very good money and i think we find ourselves in a position now where even if we were to not win today, which I bloody hope we do win today. But even if we don't, the league is still just looking like it's in such a good spot for us. We're 14 points clear of Man City if we draw here. We'd maintain a 15-point gap over Manchester United. A win here would extend that to... 18. 18 points we could be ahead of them, which is absolutely absurd. Of course, the sooner we wrap up the Premier League, the sooner perhaps I start to play the B team in league games, even with the unbeaten season on the line, just to ensure that we are kind of at full strength and fully rested for the Champions League. That said, I'm definitely getting ahead of myself. Manchester United drew against us earlier on this year, and they have us on the back foot. Cassidy to Williams Jr. And Dennis, what a save. Somehow he's managed to tip that ball over the crossbar. Massive, massive stop by Afoni in goal. He's on a 7.2 already. Neto apparently has taken a knock. And apparently I should play him in a more familiar position. I'm just going to ignore my assistant. He doesn't know what I know. Neto, he will be a centre attacking mid in the future. I believe in him. Diop, by the way, running very keenly through the middle there. I mean, if nothing else, we've got runners in our team. Although, I say if nothing else, we've got good footballers in our team too. Have we got good jumpers though? Any jumpers in the box? Not physical jumpers like you wear, but players that can jump. They've got the ball in a dangerous corner area here. We've dealt with it initially, but Mora to the edge of the box, shoots. And had that gone in, that would have been one of the best game goals of Park to Prem 
Oh yeah. As it stands, it goes off target. And from the resulting goal kick, well, the action is going to continue. Neto, being told he's playing out of position, I'm just ignoring everyone. Lee Min picks up the pieces, into the box he goes, and into the back of the net the ball goes too. Talked about the fact he'd been a bit slow to get started and then got three assists against Crystal Palace. He's got his second goal of the season here from open play, the left back. Neto stretching the defence, running through the middle. Sly tackle came in, fell to Lee Min, who still had a hell of a lot to do at left back, but he did that and more. Oh, what a finish that is into the bottom corner. I feel like when you think of the highlights so far in this game, that feels like it's come against the runner play. Statistically, though, we've had more shots. We've had more chances. And Bolton, free header there. You would have put your house on him to score it. Manchester United now have a corner of their own. There are so many corners here. It's like we're in my fridge looking at all the Muller corners. Yeah, I have a yogurt addiction. If you don't know that about me... You know that about me now. I'm I'm recovering. I, I'm in... Yeah, look, let's not talk about it. Just the word yogurt makes me hungry. Chelik, make me hungry for goals. There's options in the middle for him. He drives it in. The keeper spills it. It falls to Neto. And, I mean, he is looking like an insane signing. Sinkule could never. David Sinkule left the club a month ago. He is still catching strays. I feel like he's the kind of player in the comment section. People are constantly going to ask me, how's David doing? Sinkule update question mark. I'm trying to forget about him. I'm trying to move on. Neto is the next coming of David. Corner. I mean, we were 3-0 up against Bayern at halftime. Could we be 3-0 up here? Bolton's gone down in a heap. There were three players around him. The penalty has been given, I think. I mean, VAR will ratify this here. But there is a chance, potentially, from the spot to make it free before the break. We drew 3-3 against Manchester United. Rojas is going to be the man who steps up here. Can he add another goal to his collection this year? He's been very good in open play. He's done very well from the spot there. It's his 17th of the year. The keeper, no chance. Sent the wrong way. The Ngoma Doma. It doesn't sound like an intimidating place. Let me tell you now, if you're a team coming here, you are scared. It is 3-0 at the break. We have absolutely annihilated them. I'm just going to do the obvious thing here. Just tell the players they're doing great. They've taken off the scary Frenchman at half time. I'm just. Someone did try to write his pronunciation in the comments of a video recently. I'm just going to call him the scary Frenchman. When you see the French name that begins with a D, who plays for Manchester United kind of appearing. You know who I'm referring to. Either way, we're freeing it up in this game. We've been so, so good. You might be wondering, Jack, is there a temptation to rotate things a little bit like you did against Bayern Munich? I feel like our upcoming games, our B team should be more than up to the task for. So with that in mind, I really want to just damage United's confidence, their hopes, their dreams, their aspirations. I want to rip them all away from them. It's making me sound like I'm a villain. But no, well, look, they're in third. We want to demoralise them as much as we can. Corner, Lee Min. He is going to float it in towards the back post. I'll tell you what, the keeper did well to get that there. Who was it? Was it Bolton under it? I think it was Bolton. Whoever it was, they're running so quick, I can't click on them. I was trying there. Skill issue, clearly. Ball's going to be launched here. Sneddon nods it forward. Neto. Puts a little bit of pressure on, but can't win it, sadly. Pietra now for them, bringing it forward through the middle. Mora, deep, dispossessed by Lee Min. Neto, Celic, Rojas, one-on-one. -on -one. Can't get a shot away. In fact, he, I think he did get a shot away, but it's deflected out for a corner. It was half a chance. Set piece here. We've looked dangerous from a lot of these. We aren't a corner from one previously. Lee Min's going to put this one in. A load of players under the ball, sadly. Doesn't fall our way, and they manage to clear it away. That said, straight away, another corner. I don't know why there's so many corners here. The keeper's made a mad save, by the way. Unbelievable, the amount of corners. How many corners are we on here? If you bet on corners in this game, you're having a great time. We've had 12 so far. Still 25 minutes left to be played here. The ball's whipped towards the back post. Celic, under it, trying to find space for the shot. Lays it to Misiak, and we've got another corner. Lean in. I'll tell you what, our fullback is going to be getting cramp, isn't he? He's been playing left back today. The amount of times he's had to run to the right corner to take a, uh, the corner. I feel sorry for him. Okay, I'm going to take off some of the underperformers here. We'll give uh, Vasquez uh, a run out here. Celic hasn't had the best of games either. Samfei on Yukum. Ken looking tired. Donald, you need to learn to play defensive midfielder. I'm just going to keep putting you there until you learn. If you were wondering, by the way, because I know I'm doing it with Neto as well, kind of playing a player out of position in somewhere where I want to train them. Game time for players does help them learn positions quicker, so it is worth doing. And as we've seen with Neto today. To be honest, it doesn't really seem to negatively affect players too much. I feel like, you know, positional familiarity, whilst it's nice and it can be important, it's not always the be-all or end-all. Sometimes just a quality player will just make stuff happen even if they're not perhaps in their natural habitat. I feel like that has been on full display in this game here. There's three minutes left. The unbeaten run looks like it's going to go on again. What I would love, and I 
feel like I'm almost jinxing it by saying it, is a second clean sheet this episode against one of the big dogs of European football. If we could get another clean sheet here, it'd be really, really nice. We've looked very, very competent at the back, not really conceding too many opportunities. When Ifoni has been called into action, he's made the stops as well. Anyway, Huari laying it, I want to say, towards Misiak. That's generous, isn't it? It's nowhere near Misiak. And for a second, the prospect of the clean sheet going flashed before my eyes. Fortunately, shot was absolutely awful. Four minutes left of this game. They are going to come and go Manchester United. One Sean target all game. We deserve that win. We were absolutely sensational. Very happy with the players on the whole. If I'm not mistaken, I think Neto's got man of the match there too. That result there for us is really, really nice. Manchester City, with a couple of games in hand, are now 16 points behind us. So even if they win those games, 10 points behind us with 13 games left? We've never been in this position before. We, we are now in cruise control, I feel like. That's not to say we should get complacent, obviously, but yeah. If we slip up here and there, it's not going to be the end of the world. Neto deserves some praise. What a performance by this guy. The sooner he learns centre attack in mid, the better. I think he's proven he can play there. Now, in terms of when we're going to be back next episode, we have got some interesting-ish games coming up this month. But to be honest, I think all eyes now are on the Champions League. We have the knockout round kicking off in March. We'll be back for that on Monday. One thing I'd be very interested to know is, would you have spent the £60 million to bring Alexi to the club now? Dudon here is a very, very good player. I just feel like, given the fact we've signed him on a free, it would kind of defeat the whole point in signing him on a free to spend £60 million on him for five months early access. It's like pre-ordering a video game. I'm going to be patient. It'll be worth the wait. And I suppose the other question is, what do you think of the Donald signing? He's not the most exciting signing, and I think it is an overpay. But given the financial situation where we've just got hundreds of millions of pounds sat around. I think to sign a 22-year-old with this much potential and this current ability, with so much versatility, it just kind of felt like a bit of a no-brainer. Anyway, folks, that is going to conclude a week of Park to Prem from me. We will be back on Monday with more action, and I hope to see you guys for it. If you've enjoyed the video, as always, go down below. Leave a like, helps with the YouTube algorithm and all that good stuff. And until next time, take things easy. It's me, Jack. I'll talk to you guys in a bit. I'm out.